lyrics. Being creative is simple and fun when you simply concentrate on getting it done. So let me show you now in my own special way how I write a song a day. Welcome to How I Write a Song a Day, the weekly show in which I attempt to dissect my process for your enjoyment and benefit. Today we're talking about lyrics. Of all the practical things to talk about, I feel like this one might be the hardest to get into. What makes great lyrics? I have no idea. But as with any kind of writing, the first thing you should do is write about the things that you know, things that are important to you. I'd even go so far as to say, especially when you're starting out, write songs that are specifically about you. Write songs that nobody else could possibly write. For me at least, these are the most interesting songs. Details, little and big, are the things that perk my ears up. So there are a few other practical suggestions that I can think of. One would be to try your best to avoid cliches. They're really easy to use and they can be super useful but, for instance, we don't want another line in another song about how your tears are like the rain, or vice versa. We've got that. Yes, it's raining and you're crying and, you know, rain and tears, they're kind of similar. Yeah, okay, we, we understand. But seriously, find a more interesting way to describe your tears. Anyway, that's just how I feel about it. Second, if you want your lyrics to rhyme, use a rhyming dictionary. I use this website called rhymezone.com all the time. What I do is when I'm stuck on a line, I look up the word that I need a rhyme for and try to find the most outlandish rhyme for it and then see if I can find a way to make that fit into the song in a way that makes sense. Okay, so for instance, when I was writing out this week's episode here that I'm reading, I wrote this line. The girl was a handful, but she didn't fill my cup. Okay, that's, that's pretty good, I thought. But what if I added the word quite? The girl was a handful, but she didn't quite fill my cup. Okay, that sounds kind of cool. I think I could use that in a song, right? Like, uh... The girl was a handful, but she didn't quite fill my cup. Or something. Okay, so right off the bat, it's kind of a cliche to say that someone's a handful, right? I mean, that's, there could be a much, inter much more interesting way of saying that, but maybe it's kind of offset by this notion that she, maybe she fills the hand literally, like she doesn't fill the cup, but she fills a hand. She's a handful, but she's not a cupful. So maybe that's kind of interesting. Okay, so I looked up on rhymezone.com, and one of the first things I saw when I typed in the word cup was buck up. That's what's great about rhymes and they have it by syllable, they have it in all kinds of different ways so you can like have a lot of different options. So I saw the words buck up and that immediately made me think of buckle up. And when I thought of buckle up I was like, okay, she's a handful, so she's probably telling me to buckle up. So then I wrote, the girl was a handful but she didn't quite fill my cup until she sat me down in her bucket seat and snarled buckle up. The girl was a handful but she didn't quite fill my cup till she sat me down in her bucket seat and snarled buckle up or something. I don't know. It's kind of stupid but notice how I continue the first line into the second line using the word until girl was a handful but she didn't quite fill my cup until she sat me down in her bucket seat and so I'll buckle up. So I'm making this one long sentence and the whole thing makes sense, right? The until doesn't have to be there, but I personally like that kind of continuity. I like that I'm sort of telling a story. For me, it's all about finding the ways, those little improvements that improve the flow of the lines and sort of make them make more sense. But just like I say in every single one of these videos, it's all about the kinds of songs that you want to write. If you don't like that kind of continuity, or if you want your songs to be much more abstract, that's totally awesome. I think a good thing to do is to listen to songs that you really like and let those songs be your guide. Write them down, break them into little pieces, and see what makes them tick. So like when I started out, I wanted to write songs like Bob Dylan. I would write songs about wandering down the lonely, dusty highway, I would write about you know, a working man and, and about politics and things like that. What my 12 year old self was doing was copying his content, but I hadn't quite learned how to sort of dig into his style. Dylan's style is one that sort of draws on mythology, the Bible, and a whole sort of deep well of, of culture, and he takes all these things and he mixes them all together to create tapestries of imagery that sort of don't make sense but are extremely meaningful. 
if that makes any sense. So now I found much later after, you know, thousands of songs, I found sometimes I can ape his style and kind of pull it off. Listen to this. The scepter fell, the sword unsheathed, two riders met on a dusty road, a necklace made of human teeth was the gift that he bestowed but was that enough to save Calico Alley A pile of hands has a bottom thumb with a dressed up wound that's bleeding through the color of blood in the autumn sun the leaves that fall are leading to a season that doesn't exist except in Calico Alley. So that's very Dylan-esque to me, but I only got there from years and years of practicing and writing my own songs, writing from my own perspective, saying my own things. Finally, here's the best advice you'll ever get about writing. If you want to be a writer of any kind, write. It's as simple as that. Just write. What are you waiting for? Why aren't you writing? Now. Go. Stop looking at me. Go write something.